those disciples. Before Pentecost, they could hardly be depended upon. Easily intimidated, they all fled the scene of Jesus' arrest. Peter denied his Lord. Thomas didn't believe he was alive. If they were to take the gospel to the world, they desperately needed deeper faith. In our first study from the upper room, we looked at the experience of earnest intercession that characterized the disciples during those 10 days in the upper room. You see, God is waiting to pour his blessing upon us as soon as we draw near to him and by living faith grasp the promises. He tells us that he is more willing to give his Holy Spirit to those that ask him than earthly parents are to give good gifts to their children. As Ellen White tells us in Acts of the Apostles, page 50, if the fulfillment of the promise is not seen as it might be, it is because the promise is not appreciated as it should be. If all were willing, all would be filled with the Spirit. Wherever the need of the Holy Spirit is a matter little thought of, there is seen spiritual drought, spiritual darkness, spiritual declension, and death. Whenever minor matters occupy the attention, the divine power which is necessary for the growth and prosperity of the church and which would bring all other blessings in its train is lacking, though offered in infinite plentitude. That's why we're spending this time together. We want to recognize our need of the Holy Spirit and join together as a worldwide church in seeking that blessing. Thank you for joining us today for day two of our 10-day journey through the upper room. Let's open our minds and hearts as Dr. Ellis Simmons leads us to better understand the deeper faith those disciples needed to be prepared for Pentecost. We like to think of faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But we're going to look at deeper faith. The disciples before Pentecost were dramatically different than the disciples after Pentecost. Before Pentecost, their growing faith often faltered. After Pentecost, it was rock solid. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit strengthened the disciples to face the opposition which would come as they proclaimed Jesus' love and grace. Cowering in fear in the high priest's courtyard at the time of Jesus' arrest, Peter denied him, cowardly uttering, I do not know the man. His fragile faith was weak and vacillating. But now listen to a change, Peter, on Pentecost, powerfully proclaiming the Old Testament evidence that Jesus was the Messiah. Compare Peter's courtyard denial to his response after Pentecost when the Jewish authorities tried to silence his voice. He boldly declared, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. The indwelling of the fullness of the Holy Spirit made all the difference. In his own strength, Peter was no match for the coming devices of the enemy. But in Jesus' strength, he was more than able to live a life empowered by the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul describes the empowerment of the Holy Spirit this way, that he may grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man. Strengthened by the Spirit, faith-filled Peter was a changed man. Faith grasped the promise of the Holy Spirit as a divine reality. It believes Christ's promise to grant His Holy Spirit in abundant measure. Faith is itself a gift of God. Faith that enables us to receive God's gifts is itself a gift of which some measure is imparted to every human being. In order to strengthen faith, we must often bring it in contact with the Word. As we behold Jesus through His Word, the Spirit who is inspired the Word grows our faith. Faith is a gift. 
There is a little story about the captain of a battleship who resisted and challenged the signals to change course from what he thought was just another ship on the open sea. He even directed the other ship to change its course, to get out of his way. To his surprise, he found that what he thought was just another ship was actually a lighthouse warning him of impending danger and attempting to guide him safely across the sea. That's the way it is with us at times. We fail to recognize signals from our heavenly guide, Jesus. And in doing so, we place ourselves in harm's way. However, if we have faith and trust him, like trusting the signal from a lighthouse in the dark, he will guide us safely over the high seas of life. Faith is trusting God, believing that he loves us and knows what is best for our good. Thus, instead of our own, it leads us to choose his way. In place of our ignorance, faith accepts his wisdom. In place of our weakness, his strength. In place of our sinfulness, his righteousness. Our lives, ourselves, are already his. Faith acknowledges his ownership and accepts its blessing. Truth, uprightness, and purity have been pointed out as secrets of life success. It is faith that puts us in possession of these principles. Faith is in reality trust. Through faith, the Holy Spirit leads us to grasp the magnitude of the gift of grace so freely offered on Calvary. Through faith, we receive spiritual strength to resist the temptations of the evil one. Through faith, we are empowered to witness. Through faith, we are motivated to do whatever Jesus asks and obey what he commands. Faith grasps the promises of God and believes that they are our own. At Pentecost, higher and still higher, they, the disciples, extended the hand of faith. And under the Holy Spirit's working, even the weakest, by exercising faith in God, learn to improve their entrusted powers and become sanctified, refined, and ennobled. This experience can be ours. The Holy Spirit longs to both deepen and increase our faith. Our faith grows in the context of a close relationship with Jesus. Do you want to increase your faith? Let me give you three practical ways to increase your faith. First, expect the Holy Spirit to grow your faith as you study God's Word. Approach your Bible study with a sense of expectation. Believe that the Holy Spirit who is inspired the Bible is going to accomplish miraculous changes in your life as you persist in studying the Word. And then apply the promises of God's Word to your own life. To receive the benefit of Bible study, it must be applied to your life individually. Put yourself in the story as you read the Word. What lessons, you should ask yourself, is the Holy Spirit revealing to you in the text of Scripture that you're reading? What insights for daily living is He revealing? What convictions is He bringing to your mind? And then, act on the measure of faith that God has already placed in your heart. Look beyond the current circumstances of your life to the blessings God has for you in the near future. If the Holy Spirit impresses you to do something by revealing God's will, do it, believing you will be richly rewarded spiritually as you act on his word. To deepen your own faith, 
study the promises of God found in his holy word and in Jesus claim them as your own. For example, Matthew promises, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And then another, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And another, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Another, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Oh, the blessings of God's promises. The Lord would have all his sons and daughters happy, peaceful, and obedient. Through the exercise of faith, the believer comes into possession of these promised blessings. Through faith, every deficiency of character may be supplied, every defilement cleansed, every fault corrected, every excellence developed. True faith lays hold of and claims the promised blessing before it is realized and felt, before. We must send up our petitions in faith and then believe that we receive the blessing because our faith has hold of it. And according to God, his word, it is ours. What things soever ye desire, he says, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Here is faith, naked, open faith, to believe that we receive the blessing even before we realize it. But many suppose they have much faith when sharing largely of the Holy Spirit, only then, that they cannot have faith unless they feel the power of the Spirit. Such confused faith with the blessing that comes through faith. The very time to exercise faith is when we feel destitute of the spirit. When thick clouds of darkness seem to hover over the mind, then it is time to let living faith pierce the darkness and scatter the clouds. True faith rests on the promises contained in the word of God. And those only who obey that word can claim its glorious promises. Many people confuse feelings for faith. Some look for a spiritual experience which stimulates their emotions and makes them feel good while others fall into the opposite trap of cold, stiff formalism. In spite of such confusion, the Holy Spirit is guiding the church to a much deeper experience of faith than we could possibly imagine. That deeper experience is the one of total trust in God, confidence in his word and obedience to his will. Jesus offers this experience to you today. Won't you accept Jesus' answer? His answer to all that ails you. Accept his offer today and allow him to begin changing your life for the better right this moment. Imagine this scene. Jesus and the disciples were on the way to Gethsemane at the foot of Mount Olivet, a retired spot which Jesus had often visited for meditation and prayer before. The Savior had been explaining to his disciples his mission to the world and the spiritual relation to him which they were to sustain. Now he illustrates the lesson. The moon is shining bright and reveals to him a flourishing grapevine. Drawing the attention of the disciples to the grapevine, Jesus employs it as a symbol. Christ said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch, he said, cannot bear fruit of itself except it abides in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. 
This is no casual touch, no off and on connection. The branch becomes a part of the living vine. The communication of life, strength and fruitfulness from the root to the branches is unobstructed and constant. Separated from the vine, the branch cannot live. No more, said Jesus, can you live from me. The life you have received from me can be preserved only by continual communion. Without me, you cannot overcome the one sin or resist even one temptation. Abide in me and I in you, Jesus says. Abiding in Christ means a constant receiving of his spirit, a life of unreserved surrender to his service. The channel of communication must be open continually between the person and Christ. As the vine branch constantly draws the sap from the living vine, so we are to cling to Jesus and receive from him by faith the strength and perfection of his own character. The root sends its nourishment through the branch to the outermost twig. So Christ communicates the current of spiritual strength to every believer. So long as the soul is united to Christ, there is no danger that it will wither and decay. The life of the vine will be manifest in fragrant fruit on the branches. He that abideth in me, said Jesus, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, he can do nothing. When we live by faith on the Son of God, the fruits of the Spirit will be seen in our lives. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control will be ours. Not one will be missing. Many do not exercise that faith, which is their privilege and duty to exercise. While on earth, Jesus said, I can of mine own self do nothing. Referring to his reliance on God is the same kind of reliance we should have. If Jesus had to rely on and trust in God, surely our need to rely on him and trust in him by faith is even greater. Jesus calls us to abide in him. And if we will, he promises to abide in us. It is through his relationship, through this relationship with Jesus, that we can have that life of complete trust, of deep faith. Is it your wholehearted desire to live a life of trusting faith? Why not kneel and ask the Holy Spirit to deepen your faith and lead you to live such a life? a life of deep faith right now. Well, we've just heard a wonderful teaching on deeper faith, how we grow in trust in our love relationship with Jesus, Jonas. And you and I have been friends a while. I know you're growing in your faith walk and you teach and train pastors and elders around the world and do a great job of it. We'd like you to give us an illustration now of uh, how God has showed you more about deeper faith in your, in your life, at least in one, one example. Faith, it's a very important element in our Christian life. Mm -hmm. And I think it's God's desire that we grow every day in yeah. our faith. Yeah. Uh, I know that I need to grow every day in Me my too, faith. Brother. And Me I'm too. praying for that, like the disciples when they came to Jesus and say, Lord, increase our faith in yeah. Luke 17, 5. So I understand also that my faith can grow That's when my faith is tested. Many years ago, for example, I got sick and I went to the hospital. I stayed there for three days in the intensive care. I was bleeding, uh, internal problem in my body. Well, those are the times when faith becomes real, isn't it? When we're in a major uh, crisis in our life. That's correct, because when we lose our health, we yeah. lose everything. Right. So I was becoming weak and weak every day. And I was in despair. I didn't want to 
die. I had a wonderful family. I was faithful uh, that God had called me to enjoy ministry, to preach his message. So that night I prayed to God as never before. Mm. And I say, God, I need a miracle from you. I do not know what you are going to do, but please don't tell me what you said to the Apostle Paul. Mm. My grace is sufficient for you. So you felt Im impressed to step out and ask for the miracle now this time. Even though you can't always do that, this time you felt impressed. Give it to me That's now. That's correct. Okay. And I told God, because I never before received a big miracle in my life. Mm -hmm. And as a pastor, it's good to have a good personal experience with God right. in order to represent well Him before others. So that night, 2 a.m., God came to me. Mm. And I felt His hand passing through my body, mm. a warm hand. And when it came to my head, He said to me, Jonas, you are healed. Mm. I start crying. Yeah. I could not open even my eyes. I slept again. That morning, the nurse came for the blood test and she went to get the result. One hour later, my wife came to me and I said to her, you maybe cannot believe in what I'm going to say to you, <laughs> but this night God has visited me and he healed me. When the blood test came, the doctor told me, you have no more bleeding in your body. Well, here's a test of faith then, right? Uh, you, you felt God's presence. You knew He was there. You believe He'd healed you. And then they said, not quite. It was a unique experience in my life. <laughs> I guess so. And I was so glad for that. Mm -hmm. Because you know, faith is trusting God even when you do not get the blessing that you are mm -hmm. waiting for. So what happened? They, they told you that you weren't healed? or? After a while, that day, in the yeah. evening, they told me, you are ready to go back home. And I went. And I was so happy and blessed by God in that day. Praise the Lord. Now, you stepped out in faith. You asked for a miracle. You gave it to you. So does that mean uh, you always get your prayers answered exactly as you want them to be? I don't believe so. I think God has different ways to work and bless His children. Sure does. In that day, it was a special day for me because I received the blessing that I was looking for. And I know that if you are looking for a special blessing in your life, just keep your trust in God, your confidence in God. Even when you do not see, believing is always seeing what we have not received. He gives his answer in his time, his way. It's different at different times, isn't it? That's, That's correct. That's the journey I've discovered of faith. And like Daniel's friends, uh, they said, our God is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace, but even if He doesn't, uh, we're going to praise Him and trust yes. Him. And I think that's the deeper faith, is knowing that He always does what's best for us. Jonas, why don't uh, we pray together just briefly? Would you just pray for five or ten seconds for God to give us all more faith? For sure. Heavenly Father, You are a great God, merciful and loving God. And I love You and I trust You. Thank You for answering my prayers in the times of real need. Lord, we do trust you and we thank you so much for giving us that faith we need for the journey ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ wants to grow our faith. He wants us to be experiencing victories and answers in our walk with Him. That's the experience that the disciples had after the 10 days in the upper room. Peter's experience really stands out. Before the cross, he was so self-confident, so self-assured. Jesus tried to warn him of the coming temptation. He tried to tell him of his need, but Peter's pride was offended by this warning. He felt that Jesus was unfairly distrustful of him. Peter needed to distrust himself and to have a deeper faith in Christ. Had he in humility received the warning, he would have appealed to the shepherd of the flock to keep his sheep. When on the Sea of Galilee he was about to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. Then the hand of Christ was outstretched to grasp his hand. So now if he had cried to Jesus, save me from myself, he would have been kept. But Peter felt that he was distrusted and he thought it cruel. He was already offended and he became more persistent in his self-confidence. We are often quick to critique Peter's self-ignorance. But if we're honest, we have to recognize that Peter was only demonstrating what is our human tendency our default condition. Without a deeper faith in Jesus and dependence on His power, 
we are powerless to withstand the assaults of Satan. Yet the default condition of the human heart is that it doesn't know itself. Yes, that's my heart's default condition, and it's your heart's default condition too. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, 9, that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? It's only through the working of the Holy Spirit that we can begin to know ourselves. And only as we begin to know ourselves that we can begin to experience deeper faith. There's a promise found in the book Desire of Ages, page 329, which I found very practical and encouraging. It's very short and very simple. The weaker and more helpless you know yourself to be, the stronger will you become in his strength. The weaker and more helpless you know yourself to be, the stronger will you become in his strength. If Peter had recognized his weakness, he would have been prepared to receive God's strength. You see, it's our own confidence in ourselves, our own ignorance of our own default condition that leads us, like Peter, to operate without the incredible divine power that deeper faith can bring. How can we know ourselves better? That's the subject of a coming study from the Upper Room, and it's one program you will want to make sure you don't miss. But today we are recognizing that if we would be filled with the fullness of God's Holy Spirit, we need deeper faith. Prayer and preaching, without the exercise of living faith in God, will be in vain. But the touch of faith opens to us the divine treasure house of power and wisdom. And thus, through instruments of clay, God accomplishes the wonders of His grace. This living faith is our great need today. We must know that Jesus is indeed ours, that His Spirit is purifying and refining our hearts. If the followers of Christ had genuine faith with meekness and love, what a work they might accomplish, what fruit would be seen to the glory of God. Do you want, my friend, that deeper living faith? Do you want to have a life filled with genuine faith, a faith that will open the divine storehouse of power and wisdom? That's my desire, and I hope it's your desire too. Join me in prayer, and let's together pray that God will increase our faith, give us deeper faith, that we as His church might do a greater work for Him. Father in heaven, we pray today that you would increase our faith, that you would help us to have a deeper faith as we follow you, as we study your word, and as we seek to be transformed and have a deeper walk with you. We ask for this faith, knowing that you will give it to us because you've promised. In Jesus' name, amen.